Bible tonight. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Second Peter. Chapter number two. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter number two. Hallelujah. How many of y'all enjoyed the series on the seven churches of Asia? Amen. How many of y'all glad it's over with? Oh, good. I could have preached three or four nights on that, Brother Begay. I'll have to save that up for next time. Praise the Lord. Second chapter of Second Peter. Start with the first, second, third verse. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that these that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I ask you, Lord, to put it in my soul, impregnate me with hope, Lord, and diligence, God, to see my way through to the end. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Sister Savannah, I'm going to work on that first little part there, or that first section of scriptures for a moment. Um, but let us look here, and, uh, and I'm just going to interrupt you as you read in a few scriptures, but let's take a look at what he's saying, and let's break this down a little bit before we get into the meat of the message so we can have a clearer understanding of, of what it is we're talking about. Uh, go ahead, just start reading that again. I think it's about the fifth verse, I believe, is what we're looking for right now. And besides this, giving all diligence... Back up, one scripture. Where, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. All right. We are given exceeding great and precious promises. Hello? Yeah. You're not, these are not um, just kind of casual things that's said by God. These are exceeding great and precious promises. So let's look at what he says about these promises. Keep reading. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. All right. So by the promises, we become partakers of divine, everybody say divine, divine. nature. Your nature is not divine. My nature is not divine. But through these exceeding great promises, we become partakers of a divine nature. That's worthy of running the aisles right there. Keep reading. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So my divine nature is opposite of what destroys me. Because without it, I am destroyed with the world through my lust. I believe it was Peter that said in 1 Peter, no, I don't know if it was 1 Peter. Anyway, just trust me, it's in the Bible. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are the things that destroy us. But the exceeding great promise brings us to receive divine nature that gives us an escape route from destruction. Man, I should I love the Lord a lot more just from that. I mean, that right there ought to make us just want to live for God that much more. So let's keep reading. And but beside this giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge. All right. So we're going to take the faith in these exceeding great promises. Without faith, the promises are useless. 
So because I have faith in there, and I'm going to take my faith, and I'm going to add to it virtue. I'm going to put virtue in with my faith. Keep reading. What's next? Into your knowledge, into knowledge, temperance. I'm going to add knowledge. I'm going to add temperance. Go ahead. And to temperance, patience. Patience. And to patience, godliness. Godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Charity. I am going to add these things to my faith. My faith has given me exceeding great promise. But I'm going to become virtuous. I am going to become virtuous in my faith and my walk in these promises. Why? Because without the virtue, I become a tarnished vessel of promise. Hello? We must become a virtuous bride to Christ. Solomon talked about the virtuous woman. That's what the church is. That's what each and every one of us are. One that is virtuous to the family of God. And knowledge. Study in our word. The understanding it with knowledge. He said in 1 Peter, said, Be ready to give an account to them that ask of you of your joy. That you can explain why I'm so happy. Well, I'm so happy because well, bless God, I, I walk in holiness standards. No, that's part of the virtuous part. I'm so happy because I've got a promise. I've got a Savior. I've got a Jesus. I've got a resurrected God that laid down His life for me. He found me while I was yet in sin. And I have become one with Him. And He died for me. And I received His Spirit. And I'm walking. I, had, I can explain in knowledge. I was baptized in Jesus' name. All of my sins were washed away. I became virtuous. I know you see the outer of the vessel. But that reflects the inner vessel. I'm adding knowledge. What else am I adding? Uh, tem Patience. Temperance. Temperance. You know why we add temperance? Because sometimes God is not ready to do it. We talked about that the other night. We can't see the big picture of God. But when we add to our faith, I have faith. I know Jesus is going to heal my eyes. The end. Amen. But if He for some reason is not ready to heal me today, He is a sovereign God. Amen. I will not judge God based on my impatience. Amen. Hey, I'm a get on my face and ask God why and help me and save me and let me see and it, try to explain it to Him why I need to be able to see. Yeah, I do that too. But I'm not going to pull my faith based upon the time frame. We sang the song tonight, He's an on-time God. You can deal with an on-time God when you will add temperance to your faith. And from there, we're going to add what? Patience. Patience. Let patience have her perfect work. Be patient. Don't be in such a hurry. Why? Because when you get in a hurry, you only start to worry. Anybody ever see the music machine? Have patience. Have patience. Don't get in such a hurry. Because when you get impatient, you only start to worry. It's a good, good song. Parents, you ought to sing that to your kids every now and then. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, let's sing a song. Have patience. Have patience. It'll work. If you don't believe it'll work, you just do it for 20 or 30 times. They will learn patience. But if you'll put some patience and temperance to your faith, you've got exceeding great promises. 
that gives you the power to escape destruction. And to your patience and your faith, you're going to add what? Godliness. Godliness. Oh my goodness, what a hard thing to do. I mean, come on, young people, be, you're with me on this. It's hard to be godly, ain't it? I mean, this world is a corrupt world, and it's easier to bebop with the beboppers and jitterbug with the jitterbugs than it is to stand upright and holy and righteous and loving God, declaring Him as your Savior. You mean you're one of them born again, huh? You mean you're not? You one of them believes you ought to sell out to God, tongue talking, holy rollers, aren't you? Yeah, you're not. Why not? You mean you just don't like good stuff. You like to be damned and condemned, and you like to put yourself in devil's life. Why wouldn't you want to live like God? See, that's what godliness is. Is your life, are you adding to your promises of faith? Are you adding godliness? I'm going to walk like Him, talk like Him. When someone sees me, they're going to see Him. I'm going to be a Christian. Hello? We all fail at this. We all do. So you get too close to things, you next thing you know, you're, you're just kind of back to your old jitterbug ways. They never say, say, never, ever, ever ask a drug addict to guard a pharmacy. But a drug addict that's been delivered by the name of Jesus, it'll be just fine. Hello? Hello? That's that. Unless all of a sudden you stop believing in your promise. That's why you've got to add faith to your faith. Faith to your promise and, and patience to your faith. And that's the thing you know. You're coming out on top. Keep reading. That's the next one. Brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. Man, that's where you walk up to your brother and you smack him on the back of the head. No. That's where you go out of your way. The Bible says, be good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. You know, it's, 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 it's bad. Because too often times in the church, we'd rather go help somebody that's not in the church and fellowship with somebody that's not in the church than we would with somebody that's in the church. I'm going to give you a hint. Who we got sitting on the front row? Brother, brother uh, 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 Caleb... And that's Brother Daniel. Let's just pick at you two. Can I pick at you two? It's Jacob. Jacob. Oh, and who? What did I call you? Caleb. I don't know who Caleb even is. <laughs> but you better come back with a good report, boy. Jacob and Daniel. You know the best thing to do when you guys get in a fight? Go work together. Go do a project together. I don't know if you guys fight or not. I know you got a girl between you to keep you apart. But um, D D Mariah, is that as close as he's allowed to get to you? I'm picking at you. Uh, but, uh, you know, you want to get your problems worked out in a good, right way and make God pleased with you, go do something together. Work on a project together for the house of God. Next thing you know, you're talking, you're, you're realizing the right hand needs the left hand. And that, I mean, that goes for all of us. Brother Begay, if you come to church and somebody don't talk to you, you ought to find out a good time to go have a cup of coffee together. Find a good, be the one. Well, they don't like me. Well, no, they don't. Probably because you're unlikable. I didn't say that, really, I didn't. Brother Hodges, I didn't say that. Even though it's on the tape. No, I'm just picking. I did say that. But best thing to do is get together and work on something. Husband and wife, you get problems back and forth. Recognize there's a bigger picture. It's your family. It's your kids. It's your offspring. It's your grandkids coming up. And it, it's worthwhile to work it out. Hello? You get married. Has anybody been married for less than three years and wonder how on earth does somebody make it to 50 years? If you don't, you're goofy. At 50 years, you wonder how some people make it to 70 years. The other day I heard a, a congratulations over the, over the news. Somebody's having a 73rd wedding anniversary. Can you imagine that? You've been married to that person longer than you've been by with your mom and daddy. Brother Hodges, that's a long time. I know your wife loves you, but man, somewhere in between now and then, probably, okay, now let's, let's move on. No, I'm joking. <laughs> She's not here, I can pick on you. I wasn't picking on her, I was picking on you. Anyway, hello? 
but brotherly kindness. Best thing to do, hey, I, there's some, I got trying to get something done in church. Why don't you come help me out? Next thing you know, you're working together, you're talking together, you're functioning together, and that brotherly kindness is building a relationship that one or the other is going to get each other to heaven. This is how we activate through faith our great and exceeding wonderful promises that we avoid disaster. After that is what? Charity. Charity. Love. Hello? To your faith add love. It's the opposite of hate. Has anybody ever considered a hate crime? I was picking a sister uh, Amaya the other day and told her to talk to her civics teacher and ask them to explain a hate crime legislation. Because that's the dumbest legislation that ever was. Somebody shot a cop yesterday. Do you think it shot him because I love you? No, it's because he hates cops. Right? If I sneak out to Brother Begay's house, I break in and steal his watch. I'm not doing it because I love you. I'm doing it because I hate you. All crime is hate crime. All words against your brother is hate crimes. You got to get some charity in you because that is what strengthens your great exceeding promises. And what is all this going to do for you when you have all this? Sister Savannah, read on. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my goodness. Not only am I saved from destruction. But I'm not barren or unfruitful. Which Jesus says, if you're not bearing fruit, you're going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. Hello? Oh, I believe. But I just don't, I don't grow. These things should be in you and abound. Why? Because I will produce the fruit. I will have fruit in my life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness, temperance, faith. I will have fruit in my life. And not only fruit of the fruit of the Spirit, but I will be winning souls to God. Hello? I am so excited, Brother Begay, that I am not going to be destroyed with the sinners. Because of the exceeding promise. And I'm so excited about that. I'm wanting to build up my walk with God with patience and knowledge and kindness to my brother and all of these things. And guess what? I am reaching the world. And I'm not barren or fruitless. Some people should be a little less fruity. It's beside the point. Hello? I'm talking to us tonight uh, what's on my heart and I'm burdened because I want you to realize that there is a heaven and there is a hell. There is a way to stay out of hell and a way to get into heaven. The best way to stay out of hell is to go to heaven. Hello? That's the only way to stay out of hell. There's no Jubilee parking spot. There's no, well, you were kind, you, had a, you was a good person. Parking spot? No. There is either or. There is hell and there is heaven. You want to stay out of hell? Go to heaven. Hello? You don't want to go to heaven with me? You know where you're going. We try to say it nicely. I never forget I taught my daughter a very valuable lesson in life. Forger for chumps. But my daughter is very political and she was like eight years old, seven, eight years old and Uncle Jeff is a Ford man. And so Uncle Jeff was giving her a hard time and he's, well I drive a Ford pickup truck, Ford F-150. Yeah, but what, what kind of car do you have? I, I have a, a Thunderbird which is a Ford and I have a this which is a Ford. And His car was littered with Fords that wouldn't run, honest to goodness. But that's, that wasn't the point. And she just looked at him and goes, Somebody's a chump. I love that girl. Hello? You know, we try to say it nicely, but without the Spirit of God, 
There's no way, Jose. You got to get to heaven. You don't have to knock on heaven's gate. Why? Somebody tell me why you don't have to knock on the gate of heaven when you get there. Already open. They don't close. We don't have to worry about invaders and marauders in heaven. There ain't no such thing. Because unless you are one of His, you ain't even going to see it. John 3 and 3. You're not going to go in it, John 3 and 5. But if I'm one of His, if I've been born again, baptized in Jesus' name, which is a promise from God, all of my sins washed away, an exceeding great promise. Brother Begay, I can go to heaven. Hallelujah. Why well, wouldn't I want to go to heaven? Oh, that sounds boring. Hell sounds like a lot of fun. Night and day and day and night for eternity in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone. You never die. It just goes on and on. And the whole time you're there. I mean, Brother Hodges, a thousand years and you're still saying, my argument, my anger, my lying, my pride was never worth it. And when you've been there a thousand years, you haven't been there very long. Because there's 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands and thousands of years to go. Peter is trying to keep the church of the living God out of hell. Because hell is not anywhere I want to go. Be. I want to go to heaven. How about you? Sin will take you to hell. Church, this was not written to lost souls. It was written, so if you got your Bible open, first, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 1 and 2. Somebody read it real loud. Paul and Apostle Jesus Christ unto the Sorry, you forgot your Bibles at home. Well, anyway. Go, read it loud. Just 2 Peter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. Hold on. They have obtained like precious faith. In other words, they are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, name written in the Lamb Book of Life. But Peter feels like, I need to preach something to you people. Sister Savannah, read that second section of Scriptures. And shall receive the reward of righteousness. The second section of Scriptures. Oh, um, but there was false... False prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who shall privily shall, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought, that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their per, pernicious ways, by reason of whom they, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slum slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. What's he saying to the people that are saved? Be careful of damnable doctrines false prophets that will destroy your soul. He is so emphatic in this book about making it to heaven that he begins to produce a clear understanding that sitting under false teaching and sitting under lying teachers it likens you unto the angels that fell in the days of Lucifer being cast out of heaven. If he did not, and they were perfectly made, and they fell, and God cast them out because they turned their eyes from God and turned them onto Satan. 
when we turn our eyes from what God is trying to do in us into this world, it's a damnable doctrine that will corrupt our soul and all the good things that God has promised us becomes evil spoken of. I told you the other night about uh, Jimmy Swagger coming out against oneness, against baptism in Jesus' name. He's not against you. He's against the Word of God. Hello? We've got to recognize that when people will stand up. I had a conversation with a friend tonight. It was just a conversation and he was honest hearted. He said it was very clearly. I don't have Bible to back it up. He said, he said, I will defer to you, but I think you're wrong. Just by my flesh. I don't like that doctrine. That's what he said. Good guy. No problem. I have no, no issue with that. He wasn't arguing what the Bible said. Uh, I used to pick at Brother Larrell and, and, uh, because you know how much he loved his little dogs. I'd tell him, I'd, I'd remind him every now and then about Revelation 22, 15. Man, he didn't like that scripture because he wants dogs to go to heaven. Hello? But Brother Begay, I think dogs are awesome. Except for them goofy, long-haired Jump up in the air, wacko dogs. I just don't understand them. I don't. All other ones are cool. Except for those other ones, the Yorkies. I, I, I think it's the same one. <laughs> Little chihuahuas. Come on, get a dog. Rottweiler. Hello? Okay, maybe you don't like big dogs. Little dog, little mess. Big dog, big mess. I like dogs. I think, and I like cats too. I think everybody should have two or three cats. Nicely mounted on each side of the fireplace. But the Bible says dogs are not going into heaven. It's probably because there's no fire hydrants in there. Because the fire is downstairs. Okay? I don't care what you like or don't like. I'm not being ugly. I, I personally wouldn't mind Fido go to heaven. I used to have a dog named Tipper. I love that dog. Years later, I found out that while we were on vacation, Mom and Dad had somebody come pick him up and haul him off. Hello? How many of you parents haven't done that? No, don't raise your hand. You'll get in trouble. But... I don't care whether you want dogs in heaven or not. Brother Cody, how would you like to have a nice poodle when you get to heaven? It ain't going to happen. The Bible says it. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm just going to stick with it. Because the Bible says I can go to heaven. I don't care if witches can't go to heaven. I can. Yeah, that's right. I don't care if murderers without repenting can't go to heaven. I can. I don't care if dogs don't go to heaven. I can. How do I get to heaven? Obey the word of God. Whether I like it or don't like it. Obey the word of God. Because heaven is more important than my 44 years on this earth. And if I have another one, it'll be 45. Hello? And however many you have, heaven is more important than your opinion of me. Sister, whatever your name is, Emirate. I love you. I appreciate you. You're a good lady. But if I have to choose pleasing you or going to heaven, sorry. Ain't going to happen. Hello? I just have made up my mind I'm going to heaven. Why would you please the devil and go to hell and miss heaven? For what? Think about 
What are you going to do that's worth eternity in heaven? Well, bless God, I know I was on my way to heaven, but I tell you what, there was that Trans Am, and the keys were in it. And the owner was over there fiddling with a hot dog at the concession stand over at the drive-in theater. You young people don't know what that is, but don't worry about it. <laughs> and I just couldn't help myself, so I stole that Trans Am. I went out of there like Andre, uh, whatever that name is, Andretti, Mario Andretti. Got out of that parking lot, got down the street feeling good about myself, man. Me and, uh, 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 was it Tom Selleck that was in that movie, Smokey and the Bandit? Or whoever it was, Burt Reynolds. Me and Burt Reynolds running our Trans Ams. It's 1977 with that big old 427 engine in it. Got them wide back tires, the T-tops busted out. I'm looking for a girl in a wedding dress. <coughs> and instead I find a train and I'm dead. Hello? Was it worth it? Because you just traded streets of gold for something that ain't got no gold. Hello? It was that fast. I was rejoicing and having fun in my sin, and I drove right in front of a train, and now I can't get in. It's nothing in this world worth missing God over. There's nothing in this world missing heaven over. And you can go to heaven. Every last one of you. I don't care what you've done. I really... You know why I don't care what you've done? Because God doesn't care. Because He'd be more desiring to forgive you and wash those sins away. Hello? Sister Savannah may have stole something from Brother Daniel. And while she was there, she probably got a barrette from Mariah. And Mariah's been looking for it ever since. Guess what? It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. But God will forgive you of all of your sins. And then guess what? You can still go to heaven. Ain't that awesome? God don't care what sin you're repenting of. Amen. Well, you committed adultery 14 times. I think you need to say 32 Hail Marys, 64 dozen Our Fathers, and order me a Domino's pizza while you're doing it. With everything. Hello? No. You walk to God. He forgive you of a white lie just as fast as He'll forgive you of murdering 62 kids at the daycare. I know that don't sound right to you. You got your kid in the daycare, somebody comes by and shoots all the kids, guess what? They find Jesus, repent of their sins, aren't you going to be happy to see them in heaven? You might, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I'd be too happy to see them on this earth. That's just me. But if God can forgive them, I can too. I might not take them out for Sunday lunch. But I can accept God forgiving them. I'd rather see God forgive them than them go to hell. I think they should sit in jail the rest of their life. Okay? I got no problem with that. But I can forgive them. I don't want to have to find them. I don't want to have to do it. So don't nobody go shoot my kids just to test me. Hello? But I gotta have why shouldn't I forgive? I did my white lie was as hell bound to me as you shooting sixty two kids at a daycare. Do you realize it's just that easy to go to heaven or miss heaven? Well, it didn't really matter. It was just a little white lie. <clears throat> You're gonna go to hell over something simple like that? Tell the truth. Hello? If they don't like you because you told the truth, guess what? You don't need their attention anyway. God's good. Sister Savannah, that next scripture section is actually the one I was looking for, I think. And shall receive the reward of righteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast on you. Feast with you. 
sorry, having eyes full of adultery that and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart that they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, Balaam and the son of Bozar, who loved the way wages of unrighteousness but he was rebuked for his iniquity the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade forbade the madness of the prophet these are the wells without water clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever for when they speak great swelling words of vanity they allure through the lust of the flesh through the much of wantonness those that were unclean those that were clean escaped from them who live in error while they promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same he is brought in bondage false prophets will promise you liberty come on over to this church you can do what you want to do and still go to heaven because Jesus loves you. Jesus does love you. Hello? That's why Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hello? Oh, well, you know, you can, over at this church, we'll let dogs into heaven. Guess what? There's a lot of churches let a lot of things go on. I know churches that their youth pastor and their music directors are living with unmarried people. Men and women living together, not married, and they're still functioning as youth leaders and, and choir and, and, and singers and choir directors. Why? Because they're false prophets. They covet people because they're on the road to destruction and they are more vigilant to convert the saints than the saints are to convert the sinners. And Peter's saying, I have got to tell you about this. Over and over and over and over again. What's that next section? For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But as happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again in the so, so that was washed with to her wallowing in the mire. That's not the scripture I was looking for. Um, there's a scripture that he said it ends with uh, uh, the last part of the second scripture or there talks about him dying. As long as I am in this vessel. Did it not print the whole thing? Um, as long as I am in the tabernacle? Yes, that's it. Read that. It. Listen, listen. Remember who he's writing to. Listen to the message of this, to this book. It's all about avoiding sin, avoiding false doctrine, holding the promise that we have, which is a great and exceedingly wonderful promise that gets us out of sin, now listen to what he says. I mean, he has shook the bell about false doctrine, about Job, about those that return back to where they came from, like a dog to its vomit, like an old sow back to wallowing in the mire. And listen to what he says next. Go. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren give di diligence to make your calling and election sure. If ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Hold Christ. It. In other words, if you'll do what's right, make your calling and election sure. What is my calling and my election? Go back to what he said. Exceeding great promises. Adding virtue and patience and temperance and love and brotherly kindness. Adding all of that to it. We have this. Oh, what's the next scripture? What does it say right there? We have what? Where? An open. The last scripture you just read. Um, for so an entrance shall be ministered. An entrance shall be ministered unto you. To everybody else. It's a solid wall. 
But God opens up a door for you. If you don't forget these things, you're going to hold them fast. You're not going to let them slip. You're going to make it. Keep reading. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in I will not be negligent. Peter's saying, it is important for me to not be negligent to put... In remembrance of these things. Put though, you in remembrance of what? Don't follow after false doctrine. If you end up, God didn't spare the angels that fell. He won't spare you. Don't go to hell. Go to heaven. Keep your life right. Keep it true. Live for God. Walk for God. Don't turn your back on God. I won't be negligent to not minister this to you. Keep reading. Though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must part off this, tab this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has As long as I'm alive, in other words. And God's fixing to call me home soon. That's what Peter's saying. As long as I'm alive, I'm going to voice the voice of God. I'm going to sing the bell of alarm. Don't go to hell. Don't be lost. Live for God. Rejoice with God. Be joyful in your promises. Make your calling and election sure. You've got a Lord Jesus that came to this earth and died for you. So you don't have to die that eternal death asleep throughout eternity. You can be alive rejoicing together with God for all eternity. If you'll hold fast these things. I don't want to go to hell. Hello? Like, oh, uh, pro, there was an old black preacher years ago, I don't know if it was Martin Luther King or who it was, said, what in hell do you want? There's nothing in there I want. There is nothing in hell that I want. Uh, we're going to have a party when we get to hell. No, you won't. It's going to be the most miserable. It will be eternity not seeing a person, not knowing a person. Just in the pitch black darkness, your spirit in convulsions of pain and crying and shatteredness. Wondering when it will be over. Never knowing the end. Anybody ever have a nightmare? This is a nightmare you'll never wake up from. Freddy Krueger will come to visit you night after night, during the day and at night. If you don't like clowns because they're scary to you, guess what? You'll realize you were the clown. You don't want to go to hell. It's really a nightmare that lasts for eternity. You're not going to wake up from it. Church, you ought to go home and read 2 Peter. It's only about four, three or four chapters. Go home and read 2 Peter. If not tonight, tomorrow. Family, sit down together and read it. It's a, it's a, this man is in his aging years. He's walked with Jesus. He's, he was the first preacher of the gospel. He got up and he preached on the day of Pentecost. The first outpouring of the Holy Ghost was because of his preaching. He's seen signs and miracles and wonders and all this kind of stuff. And what does he say? This is the thing I will not neglect to do. As long as I'm in this tabernacle, I will preach to you to avoid going to hell. It ought to did to probably do you pretty good to read 1 Peter 2. But 2 Peter is very powerful. You ought to read it. It'll do you good. Why don't we stand to our feet tonight. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for you have sent to us tonight a sound of an alarm to save our souls from hell. Lord, I thank you for the book that Peter wrote that we can take and gleam treasures of knowledge out of. For Lord, we know that there is an enemy of our soul that is not looking out for our salvation, but is looking out to try to bring us unto damnable heresies that will destroy us, that will cause us to go to hell. Lord, help us to make our calling sure. Help us to set our sights on things above. Help us to live for the kingdom of God. Help us to have patience for the promises of God that are upon us. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for speaking to my heart. I thank you, Jesus, for dwelling amongst us and talking to us. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to carry each member of this church from this place, God, reminding them daily that heaven is real and so is hell. There's no reason that we should be lost. 
not when you paid such a great sacrifice for us to be saved. Lord, touch the church. Be with each and every one. Stir our hearts, God. Let somebody be shaken this very night while they're in their own home, in their own bed. Let them begin to call out on Jesus. And Lord, I ask you to show up as a quick and ready answer to their life for you are real and you love to help your people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel that I'm going to give a unique altar call tonight. Not here. I want you to take some time before you go to bed tonight. Ask God to forgive you of everything that you've done this day, this week in your life. Things that you know and the things that you don't know. And have a confession time with the Lord. It don't take long. But I promise you, if in the light of this message, you'll do that before you go to bed tonight. Your day tomorrow is going to be a lot better. With much more power and faith, will you speak your words of faith in the morning when you get up? Amen? You will thank God for another great day, much better when you face it without sin. So the altar call begins at bedtime. Have a little talk with Jesus tonight before you close your eyes. And God's going to say everything's going to be all right. Turn, shake hands.